This is Modern Homesteading. Over the past few weeks, I've been amassing my collection of crosscut saw filing tools. Hard to come by. Uh, most of them that I have are old, some of them new. Uh, some of the old ones are no longer in production, so you either have to make your own or, or find something that's vintage. So today, uh, I fa I've got, actually this is what I got from my grandfather's things, I just fa recently found it, um, a, a saw filer's hammer. Uh, problem is, well there's good and bad with this. The handle is broken, the good part of it is that the original handle is still there and it's a real special handle, it's very purpose built and we're going to copy that today in, the, um, in a handle from scratch uh, for this. Uh, while I have your attention, you want to see the rest of the stuff that I've got? Yeah, let's do that. We'll just do a quick tabletop here. I'll show you the tools that I've got. Missing just a couple, but uh, another week or so I should be able to get filing. Alright, so here's my box of goodies. Let's unpack this here. First off, this is a new tool, um, a long jointer. This was uh, given to me as a gift from my uh, new friend and subscriber Thomas. And he uh, and his son are going to come up and uh, drop off a saw uh, next month sometime and I'm going to file it for them. And he helped me out with this. So this is a beautiful tool. This is really special to me because they're only, um, I think as of the t day I purchased these, there are only 12 left. These were made by a um, aerospace engineer who had a company and put these together and everything about them is top notch. Uh, I, I won't go into all of it, but it, I mean, he's input inserts, steel inserts into the aluminum threads. I mean, if you can just, anyone who knows machining, this is all machined. Uh, it's beautiful. It's a, it's a work of art and there's still a few available and for $250, this is a value. The original Gibbs jointers, long jointers that um, are still out there are, are now getting climbing up to around four hundred dollars so at 250 this is a was really a fair price in my opinion so that's the new so here's a really old tool, tool. this one here is dated 1895 this was given to me by my old neighbor Henry back before I even knew what it was and this is a combination raker pin gauge and you'll see all the stuff in the future uh, this is a nice one I use this one in the crosscut saw class and I I, I liked it. And Anderson, uh, I will hopefully be replacing it someday with an Anderson for various reasons, but for now this will serve um, just nicely. I've got uh, also old for my grandfather's toolbox uh, is a Simons gauge guide. You've seen that. That's kind of cool. It's got the Simons tool and steel there in the logo. Is that a focus? I don't know if that's in focus or not. I've got, um, I'm almost reticent to bring this out, I, I think I have maybe left some disparaging remarks about Dremel tools, but uh, a Dremel tool is really nice for crosscut saw filing for cleaning out the gullets. What else do we have here? We've got a, uh, I've got a heavy um, set block that I can use. Not the best shape, but one that I had in my toolbox. This is actually for auto body, but it'll work just fine. And what else do we have in here? file handle files you can still get good files um, but you can get a lot of bad files too who makes the best files well the Swiss uh, the Swiss make the best files if you can find them so 8 inch mill bastard files uh, are typically what most guys seem to prefer for filing saws there is a company out there that I have um, that I used uh, called safe edge or I think it's safe edge and that, that's what I believe this is. They, they've got these files that are from Portugal. And Portugal, they re, they're really nice. Uh, I, this is the file that I used in the class. This is a 6 inch. The 8 inch is better. Uh, but I really like them. And the thing I like about them is they've got smooth edges. There's no teeth cut on them. And what, what it does is it, it prevents you from damaging the saw. Where these hard Swiss edges, you can see you've got the serrations, the cutting serrations on the side. Uh, one wrong move and you can do damage to a saw. So before I use these new files, I'll take that on the grinder and wipe all that off and have a nice clean finish because I don't need that portion of the file. But um, not a big deal. I'll be buying in the future these safe, safe end files uh, in the 8 inch, just like this. Great, great files. And also, uh, a file you need, uh, a triangle style file like this, also with the edges safe. If you look there close, you can see that I've knocked the gr with the grinder, I've knocked those hard edges off. And we'll talk more about that in the future. 
Uh, a tool that I don't have is a set spider. Uh, nice to have about three or four of those. Um, I'm still looking for set spiders, so I haven't got across, come across that. But the re and a mirror. This is also out of Granddad's uh, toolbox. Is a mirror for inspecting. So a couple things in the works. I, I will be building a my own uh, gauge. Uh, that will replace maybe replace a set spider. I'm going to try it anyway. I haven't used one before. I've got some diagrams uh, from online, and I'll, I'll be sharing that with you. That'll be coming up here in the future. But for today, file handles, of course. Today is about the hammers. One of the hardest things for me to find, and, and from those I talk to that are in looking for this type of thing, are these original uh, Sawyer's hammers. This one, fortunately, got from my grandfather's stuff. Um, as I said, I just recently found it, and it's a really nice, I think, I believe, I, I looked at the old catalogs, it looks like it's, it's an Atkins. Um, and this is one of the best ones. Hard, hard to find one of these. And what's really cool about this is it's got the original handle on it. You can see that shape. You know, we, we take a lot of things for granted because we don't, on, on tools that we don't use all the time, and one thing that I have noticed on using this handle is there's so much to it. There's so many years of evolution that have, that have um, culminated to come up with this design. And you might be looking at that and thinking, you know, what's so special about that? But it is special. If you look at it, the swell of it, this palm swell comes up here and then it tapers down. You're not going to see that in new handles. Not, not that I've ever seen before. To think about it, when you grab a piece of clay, you know how we used to play with clay when we were little, and you squeeze it, and your hand warms it, and it conforms to your hand, and you open it up, what does it look like? You know, it's got that, it's got that shape. It's got this shape right here. And I, I know it seems like a little thing, but when you are working on something as critical and as detailed as these vintage cross-cut saws, you need every advantage you can get. And you can spend... Uh, I was just reading an article today about a guy who spent eight hours just on the rakers alone on his saw. So eight hours multiplied on a tool like this, if it's ergonomic and it's comfortable, it is not only more comfortable to the user, but also can make the difference on, on, on the outcome. Because one wrong strike on a saw and you can break a raker off and you destroy an irreplaceable saw. So the hammers are really important. So problem is with this handle, I'm going getting off on tangents here, you can see that it's, um, it's had it and needs replaced. Fortunately, we still have it, so we're going to use it as a pattern. And I'm not going to change a thing because it's just, it's perfection. And it was developed by people who have a lot more experience than I do, and, and I'm not going to try to reinvent the wheel. Another one that I found uh, in my grandfather's things, I can't believe all this cross-cut saw stuff that I found, because uh, I don't believe he filed saws. I never asked him about, but I don't think so. Uh, is this? I believe that this is a Sawyer's hammer as well, and I think it's an Atkins hammer, and it's probably was designed for setting teeth. Because I saw one in the catalog that looked identical to this. It's maybe a little bit on the lighter side, but I, I think it's a really good ha hammer, and it's in good condition. This is this is rare. You know, when you have those little round tapered heads that come down like that. Oftentimes that's indicative of, of Sawyer's hammers, especially this. This is more pronounced. And we'll, we'll talk about all that stuff later. But so what I've got here for you today is I've got a beautiful piece of clear hickory. You can see there, in grain shot. And I'm going to quarter saw this, and it's going to be enough material for four nice handles. So I've already cut it to length, but you can see right there, we can get one handle in each quarter. Get one, two there, and then on the sides. Plenty, plenty of room there. Uh, for for handles, so I want to make a special handle for this a, a exact copy for this little head and this one as well, and get these ready and one step closer to the tool to the uh, to filing saws. So let's uh, I'm going to go quarter saw this on the table saw, and then I'll come back and we'll work on the shaping. So there it is in all its glory, the Atkins replica saw your handle. Change mine a little bit. You can see here, I'll put them side by side, the original. Started the taper up a little bit sooner and came down to a little bit finer point for me. I thought this handle might be just a bit long, the way because I kind of choke up on it. And so I brought that taper down quicker. You can see a little bit smaller there at the end in the thought that I probably will 
cut that off about right there, maybe an inch. But I'll use it first. And I might find out that, that you know, my, my changes are not as good as the original, but uh, it, it turned out nice. Nice, nice piece of hickory wedged in there. I have not put a steel step wedge in there, and I'll keep an eye on it. I wedged in there really tight with a good hickory wedge that I made. I don't think I'll have any problem with it. It's not a, not a big hammer, but if it does, we can put a step wedge in it. But pretty nice. It's a, it's a nice little hammer, isn't it? It's got a little bit of, little chipping on the smaller edge. See these Sawyer's hammers have a small. This edge is a little bit smaller than this one there. It's a little bit bigger. And this was mushroomed out just a little bit. I filed that down. You can see that. And this here has got a few little chips in it, but uh, no matter. Put some linseed oil on it, and it's good to go. I don't know if it's big enough to put my maker's mark on. I'm pretty excited to get started on filing saws. I actually got my bench set up in the wood shop and reorganized and switched things around where uh, that's going to be a, a nice inspiring place to work. I'm working on the lighting. Lighting is really important uh, with the saws. It needs to be uh, just right uh, so you get reflection off of the, well, you can go on and on about that for a long time. Now's a good time to click the thumbs up button uh, if you're enjoying these videos. It's a way for you to support the channel and it helps us and we really appreciate it. Also, I wanted to add, um, I forgot to mention this, that uh, there was no Bible study last Thursday, and that was my fault. Um, that was the day that I um, went and got all the stuff from the barn, and when you start talking to the old guys about tools, well, time just kind of gets away from you, and I was not able to get back in time to do that, so I apologize, but we'll try to pick that up on Thursday. What else is there? Did you realize in the back of the truck of all my goodies, there was a very, very old ram pump. I am going to uh, pull that out today and maybe we can take a look at that. Maybe even uh, go plug it in and see if it runs. It's something that's different, the design to the one that I built and I'm not to exactly sure if I have all the pieces. I really don't know, but there's only one way to find out. So look for that in future videos. What else was there? There was something else I wanted to share. Well, that'll do. So, uh, as is my custom, sometimes, over there, to your left, I put a couple videos from the past. Um, I only picked the good ones, so if you're a new subscriber uh, and you like uh, homesteading and tools and just that type of thing, you might enjoy those videos. So I'll put those clickable links uh, for you. Those of you guys that are watching on mobile, I will put those links in the subject heading because they are not as yet link clickable. So that's it. Thanks for watching and we'll see you guys in the next video.